Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video, I'm just gonna walk you through how I chose my name, how I chose my logo, and what was wrong with my logo all these years that I didn't even realize. So um, what you're seeing on screen here is a speed art. It's about three hours long, condensed into two minutes. The name Mobox came from some brainstorming. So I wrote down a ton of different names. Um, I knew there was like some letter combinations that I liked. I liked having an X at the end. The word box always was kind of interesting only because of how geometric it is in terms of a logo potential, but also as as a word box. I don't know, it's short, sweet. Um, and I know I wanted something with like motion graphics, MoGraph, MoBox. It didn't really click to me that it was a good name. And it wasn't until I actually made the logo that I was like, oh crap, like this is actually, I kind of like this name. I like how it's symmetrical. I like how things are really squared off. I think it's actually really good, but it took me maybe like six months to come up with a logo um, that you see today, just the, the letter logo, the font logo with a custom font. And I actually didn't really like the name that much. I mean, I thought the name was okay. Yeah, I mean, it was just something that I came up with. I hadn't seen it before. I did a couple searches on it to see if anyone else had the name. Um, there was a, a couple that maybe had spaces like Mo, Space, Box, or maybe verticals that are so different or stuff that wasn't updated in a long time. And then I went over and I, there's this website, it's like Domain and Name Checker. Um, I'll put the link down in the description and I'll put it on screen. But basically what it does is you type in the name you want and it'll tell you if the domain's available, if the Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTubes are all available. So that makes it really easy if you pick a name and then you search it and you find out that someone already has it or nobody has it, but everybody already has the domains. Um, it makes it really easy. So I did that. Mobox Graphics was available. Um, in retrospect, I should have made it Mobox Media because maybe like a year ago, I was thinking, man, maybe I could do some other stuff, but I didn't. I chose Mobox Graphics. So kind of stuck with that. It was the logo that proved the name to me. And I get now people telling me all the time that, oh man, the name's so cool. How'd you come up with the name? And Truth be told, it wasn't cool until I think I made it cool. Maybe I'm giving myself too much credit, but I think it's a combination of what the word means, how it sounds, what the logo is, and then what's behind it. So the content or the person or the face or the name. My logo has been messed up for about a year now since I finalized the logo and I started using it. What I didn't notice at the time was it was totally geometrically wrong. So I'm gonna put it up on screen for like, five seconds and you tell me what in the comments down below what you think is wrong with it. Five, four, three, two, one. If you said the M is huge, the B is too small and the gap between the O and the X is too big, then you're correct. But for me, some reason, I didn't even notice it. I was talking to a friend and they said, do you intend for the M to be so big? And then I was thinking, oh, the M does look kind of large. And then suddenly the, the B looked incredibly tiny. And I was thinking, I was seeing the M next to the B and noticing that the difference was huge. I know not all letters will be identical in, in, in size and dimensions. For instance, an I can never be the same dimensions and scale as, as an M, for example, but I thought they were way too far off considering the O and the X are completely geometric in terms of size, so perfect square. So the M has the potential to be perfect square, the B maybe not so much, but at least the M should, right? So once I saw it, I just could not unsee it. I put in a lot of time to make it better and I had some spacing issues that I think I've cleared up, but I'm having my friend over at Pixel and Bracket take a look. He's really great with Illustrator and text and fonts and stuff like that. So he's gonna maybe adjust the kerning on it a little bit. But one of the things when you adjust the logo is now the animation doesn't work. The intros, the outros, nothing fits anymore. The logo is slightly off center in terms of maybe before it was this wide, now it's this wide, or now it's this wide. So that all changes. Um, luckily in After Effects, um, I did something called pre-composing, which if you are watching this channel, you probably know what pre-composing is. But basically all I had to do was pull my old logo in, put it in replacing the old one, and most things worked pretty well. So the outro worked pretty well. I had to adjust the beginning a little bit, but the outro was a plug and play, but the animation of the text was different. So that's what you're seeing on screen here. And what I realized was that it, I might as well, if I'm going through and adjusting all of this, I might as well just make a new one. So some of the letters remain the same, some just got moved around, but the M is new. Um, the O is new, other O was kind of adjusted, and the B is just the same, but just obviously with the new text, new font. So I think it's it's interesting to look back on things that you've done, and if you notice that something is bad, like if you look back on your old drawings, for example, and you're like, oh my God, they were so bad. Well, someone told me something, they said, if you look back on something and you see, think that, that, that you looked stupid, or that you did something wrong, or it was ugly, or it wasn't symmetrical, or it didn't look right, that means that you've that you've 
progressed beyond the point of making those mistakes and you're able to now identify those mistakes. So it was kind of recently, I just got the realization, totally wrong. Somebody had to, had to help me meet that realization. But, but now I look back and I'm like, oh my God, it was so bad. But that just means that now I know better and now I, I can identify that I was, that, that, that I, I can identify those issues um, significantly better. So um, never look back on the old stuff and be like, oh man, I was so stupid, I was so stupid. Think now, wow, I'm so much better than I was before. If I thought I was good then, man, I don't even know how good I am now. Now maybe don't get like, let your head get too big, but um, anyways, that's just kind of um, a little bit of a background how I came up with my name, how I came up with the logo. Um, I guess the last thing I'll say is that I think animating the logo was really important for me because that's what we do. We do some animations and I don't consider myself an artist. I consider myself, well, I am an engineer by trade, but it a motion engineer. So um, some of my designs aren't that great and some of the colors and choices aren't that great, but I hope some of the methods that I'm able to, to show you and give you um, can be looked at a technical level and then they can be implemented as a tool for um, for any projects that you work on in the future. So I ho let me give give me your feedback on the intro. Um, I don't think it's going to change unless the letters change dramatically. Maybe sm small adjustments of placement. But um, overall, uh, share with me your stories and be sure to share your logo with me on on Twitter. And maybe we'll get some back and forth. And maybe I'll be able to give you some feedback or help you with picking a name. And um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching.